ready? Not yet. Okay, signal is running on.
point I just want to reiterate is that NASA as a coalition has maintained and clearly stated its objectives. These objectives remain to seek electoral justice, to ensure the independence of the judiciary and other independent institutions like the police. We have also maintained that we want to consolidate the revolution and indeed we also want to have Kenyan dialogue and subsequently make recommendations on the need to review some aspects of our constitutional arrangements. This we have stated. And we have clearly stated that NASA is not a military organ. NASA does not have any weapons of war. And it is this principle that we have maintained all along. There are going to be challenges along the way. We shall have to be tactful in the way we approach those challenges. It does not make sense for vilification. Those who are thriving on vilification, vilification of NASA and some of its principles are doing so without realizing they are actually propelling a doomsday agenda to make it look like NASA is no more. NASA is a legally registered coalition of three political parties, four, four political parties. And at no time have we come together as the summit to say that we want to break up the coalition of NASA. They are legal instruments. You can go and look at them. And there's a procedure if that were to happen. So I want to thank the people who are spending a lot of time uh, to spend the consent with us. And a lot of resources vilifying other individuals. have all contributed tremendously to the stature of NASA in different ways. And we shall continue to contribute to the well-being and stature of NASA and by extension to the well-being of Kenyans so that they are protected, so that their freedoms are protected and guaranteed in accordance with the Constitution. And that includes even the media that is also getting a battering. So, ladies and gentlemen, and to our supporters out there, the message is, hold your horses. Let us not spend too much time fighting each other. This is a long haul. And I reiterate that we are a legally registered coalition, national super alliance, and the objectives we pursue, I have clearly spelled out in front of you and behind me or next to me is our leader. And our deputy leader. The election was there. There are challenges to it. We seek electoral justice. That is the message we have. And we do our work with mutual respect. We carry our dignity amongst ourselves. So we don't want people to imagine that we treat each other with a sense of indignity. That is not true. So ladies and gentlemen, it's now Thank my honor to request Honorable Stephen Kalonzo to come forward. Thank you. Well, Ladies and gentlemen,
Tuesday, the 30th of January. It's a very historic day. The multitude, the crowds that um, thronged Uhuru Park were indeed unprecedented. One can only imagine when pre former President Kibaki was coming home from London and all of us went to meet him. Um, that was the mood then. And I think this was replicated even more significantly on Tuesday the 30th. So if one wants to know about the mood of the Kenyan people, it was very ably displayed and very peaceful. The most peaceful gathering of Kenyans wanting to make a political point. So I want to say that we stand with the Kenyan people, with our brother, Raila Molo Dinga, and we intend to see these matters to their logical conclusion. A decision was taken on the day we went to Machakos for the People's Assembly. When our brother confided in us, and I think it's good to be very transparent, we all know what you're dealing with. We are aware of the attendant political risks and even risks to our own lives and families. And our brother Raila Odinga offered to say, you are my deputy, but I want to start this thing. Therefore, I will swear in before you. That was the tactical aspect, because uh, Brother Musali had not joined us at that time. He was on the way coming, and uh, Brother Weta was with me. So this was well organized. And even if we had ended up, because what I think in the, the, the challenge on the timings, and body language, uh, as people would want to say, when we were supposed to meet, and our brother said, I'm marooned somewhere, and I cannot therefore come to the place where we are waiting for him. And we have made it very clear that technically we were actually under house arrest. How would you describe a situation where, as you are leaving your house, the GSU Land Rovers and, 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 and lorries are faring away the only security you have? And a day after, you actually attacked, because on that particular day, our, our, our main aim was to get together. And I want to tell Kenyans that even if we had ended up together in Uhuru Park, which was not made possible, the Honorable Raila Odinga would have taken the oath alone, minus his deputy. And the question is, when is this going to happen? And I want to tell you that we are working on the details going forward, of course observing the situation and moving forward. But I want to reiterate what my brothers have said here, that uh, Jubilee are panicked. I own a firearm, and uh, when we were meeting here, <laughs> this, a letter was delivered uh, to the gate. Imagine, on the 30th, your security is withdrawn. Uh, the following day, you are not even petrol bombed because now it is becoming clear who was responsible in trying to throw that hand grenade. And had it landed where they wanted it to land, the effect would have been catastrophic. But the good Lord saved us. In fact, people have been sending me a Bible verse at Isaiah 54, at verse 17, that no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. This one did not prosper. <laughs> not even the the two bullets fired out of an AK-47 rifle. And people can still say that was supposed to scare like you scare animals in a national park. And then the following day, they bring the letter withdrawing. The only thing you could have to defend yourself. So the intentions are clear. Intimidation, lack of respect, because even if you want to say Raila Molo Dinga, was not validly sworn in as the president of Kenya. You cannot deny the fact that he's a former prime minister and is entitled to everything that, uh, that has to do with that office. But the Kenyan people have spoken, and we are here to tell you we are standing together. We will not therefore accept any intimidation. I want to join my colleagues in saying 
We have watched debate on the social media. One NASA member against another NASA member, a NASA member of parliament attacking a summit member. I think we now must call our troops to order and uh, ask that we refocus. We remain focused. We remain united because a journey to Canaan is still a valid journey. And so the pretenders after the throne are panicked and they are saying all manner of things. We would have expected IBC to contradict the results that we gave showing exactly what happened at every polling station out of the 40,883 of them, every Kim's kit that was used, the results announced, and clearly the evidence is all there for us to see. So I think one thing which is clear to Kenyans, and I believe the international community, is that there's no doubt in anybody's mind whatsoever who won the election on the 8th of August. And of course we maintain that was what was announced was, was the declaration of the winner that time, not the results themselves. So this is what we wanted to say. Na tuseme na asante sana, watu wenga menipigia shimu, kutupa pole kwa zbabu ya vamisi ambao lifanyika juzi, usikuwa kwa mukia jana, wakaja, wapelelezi, uh, experts wa bomb disposal, Mkuwa CID and Neohili la Nairobi, even the police spokesman himself. And you can still end up with, you know, now what we're going to fabricated, <laughs> a fabricated story. I will not be surprised if they say it was an internal thing, ya NASA. That is the next thing they probably want to say. And they send on 411 information to the effect that, um, yeah, we have, we have got some suspects. We want not no stand. I mean, they keep on saying we we'll leave no stand, no stone unturned. <laughs> so let us hope we can this time, especially when we remind ourselves about what happened to Jacob Juma, to Chris Musando. So as we call our troops to order, I reiterate what my brother Musalia said: we are a properly registered political movement, and. One which is the largest, if not in the region, definitely in this country. And so we should not lose hope. We should not attack each other. I've seen on the same 411 uh, people saying Kalonzo should retire honorably. This is a light one. How do you expect me to retire <laughs> from politics so soon when we are just about to arrive? So it is clear. The best of NASA is yet to happen. My brother Raila Molo, Raila Odinga, uh, Karibu, declared our president. And again, if you want to, and I want to know, I know that there, there, there's nobody who can arrest Raila Molo Odinga. Um, so stop harassing TJ Kajuang. In fact, watching that, although we didn't catch up with your brother, I would I probably would be right in assuming he actually saw himself to office. Because we are aware of some of these tactics. If you want to charge Kajuang for, for properly being um, uh, galeted as, a, as, a, as, a, as an advocate of the High Court, you can go ahead and do so. So he's not supposed to wear his garments. But if you say if you want to charge him with uh, swearing Raila Odinga, he didn't do that. And so, but the truth is, the people swore him in. Mashmewa <laughs> Raila Amol Odinga. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, we did promise the people of Kenya that uh, we were going to issue a statement on the way forward after the swearing in. This press statement today is not that statement. The statement is going to be issued tomorrow. So I want that just for, for clarity to be known that we are going to issue a comprehensive press statement through our technical team as a way forward following the swearing in on 
Tuesday, the 30th of January, of February. Or January, sorry. But ladies and gentlemen, look at this. The attack on the media. The arbitrary arrest of individuals. Intimidation of the judiciary. Divide and rule tactics. Kanu is back. Kanu is back, the force, uh, in, in, and by a new name that we must fight. We fought for a long time to give this country a new constitution in 2010. That new constitution, together with all the freedoms that it entails, is under serious attack right now. They say that those who the gods want to kill, they first make them mad. You can see that the Jubilee regime is certainly mad. How else do you explain what has happened to the media fraternity in this country from Monday up to today? That a minister can wake up and say the media disobeyed the order. And as a result of that, they are being punished. Investigations are being carried out. And while the investigations are ongoing, the media will be off air. As if the government owns the media. So that means that the government has completely suspended the operations of our constitution right now. Yet they have not gone to parliament to get a permission to declare a state of emergency. Who has given Mr. Matiangi those powers which he is pretending to be exercising? Either we are living under this constitution or we don't and we can go each one of us our own different ways. We can go different ways and there's no need to have a government. If the government itself is going to disobey violate its own laws and the constitution. We did, on the other Friday, produce detailed account of how Kenyans voted on the 8th of August. I can swear by the Bible that what we gave are the authentic results of elections of 8th of August. It took time to get that information. But that is the authentic uh, uh, information how Kenyan voted. And it shows clearly that we won those elections. And Jubilee lost. So we are not going to accept to be dictated by Jubilee, whom we beat in an election. What they did was to force the IBC to declare fraudulent election results. Therefore, I can speak without fear of contradiction. That's why I'm speaking with a lot of energy and conviction that I won the elections this pair on the 8th of August. And that's the reason why I was able to stand between that huge multitude of Kenyans and hold the Bible. I'm doing it not because I'm mad. I'm not... I'm a Romanian. I'm a very reasonable Kenyan. And I'm talking out of conviction that I won elections. And every Kenyan knows that majority of Kenyans did not vote on the 26th of October. The few who voted are known. They know themselves. But you have challenged the IEBC not to go and buy one page in the newspapers to say, oh, so many people access our records here and there. You have told IBC, just as you have done with the result of 26th of October, open the servers of 8th of August, show Kenyans, contradict that information, produce the same logs like you have produced to convince Kenyans that what you are saying is correct. You are a public institution. 
So you have a responsibility to provide the information. Freedom of information is a right enshrined in our constitution. We must move on. Jubilee is now arresting people and taking them to court to charge them. They're threatening people with treason or whatever, all these kind of things. We want Jubilee to accept that they lost the elections. And we are going to show you the way forward, how we are going to move to, to, uh, until the end uh, tomorrow. So that day was a day of swearing in. And I have these, my colleagues here with me. First, I want to say Paul to my brother, Stephen Calonzo, for the attack which was done in, in his co compound against his family. My brother here has got a sick wife who is ambulant in the house. Imagine the kind of shock that such a person receives when uh, a grenade is thrown into the compound and bullets are fired in the compound. The police have said that they are on the track to get these people. Then they know them. If the police spokesman says that they have identified these people, they know them. They must also have known where they came from. Let it not be like that of, of Jacob Juma or Musandu, where you keep on telling Kenyans, oh, we are going to leave no stones unturned, and the stones are still unturned two years later, in the case of Jacob Juma. We are going to remain together as NASA, as you can see us here. We are here as NASA and the so-called division in NASA, which is the media, is an invention of the media. I did say that day to the public that these three gentlemen were not there and that they're going to explain to the people why they were not there. That was the purpose of this press conference, which they have explained why they were not there on that particular day. But I also say that we are together in spite of themselves not being there on that day. And also say that Kalonzo will take an oath at a different time. So I confirm what I said on that particular day, that that is the situation as it is, and that the war is not intra nas The enemy is known to all our people, and that is where all our guns should be trained towards. We shall remain united. And as I've said, tomorrow we'll receive a more comprehensive statement. Thank you very much. Sir. So.